most important thing to do a track is to start with the drums because you have to have something to dance to. Let's create a clip. So let's draw our kicks to keep the tempo. Let's draw the toms. Let's hear it. Hi, this is Boris from Ableton Tips and today we have a new video format for you guys. A while ago we've had the pleasure of hosting the producer named Chot, and for today's Ableton Tips video we've selected his top 10 techniques. Before we get into the tips, if you like what we are doing on this channel, consider subscribing and make sure to check out the incredibly inspiring sound pack Chot released with us, which includes all the samples and custom Ableton devices he uses in the video. The link is in the description. Alright, so let's get started. Tip number one is drums before harmony. In today's first tip, Chots explains why he starts his production process from making drum patterns. Now that all the eight drums are there, it's easier to, to find, at least for me, all the other melodic components. Easy to fill the gaps in between the tracks. Uh, I really feel that if you do the other way around, so finding before the melodies and the atmospheres and all the rest is is really much more complicated to find the, the right drums. Or in the end you can, you can find them for sure, but it will take you uh, a lot of time. Like this I think it's more fun and, and easier to do also because you can add really thousands of drums in your track and uh, they will sound uh, good together and still you don't know in which tonality you are, but uh, they will sound good. Tip number two is have fun with macros. Chels uses his very own drum rack, which has macros for easy access to DJ style effects. He uses a MIDI controller to tweak them while producing. In this drum rack, for every sound, there are eight macros that you can see here. And there are even like eight macros that are like general. So you can have fun while producing. For example, now I found the bass, I can go like this, removing the low frequency with the high pass filter, adding some reverb, and go back to it. Or there's, there's a fill. Like this is fun to produce and it's not like, you know, putting blocks uh, and uh, it's also cool if you're jamming with someone else, if you're in two people so one can, can stay there and tweak, you know, parameters and just put some reverb and filter before now and then. I think it helps your brain to refresh. Tip number three is auto sidechain with Shaper. One of the most awesome tools Chots uses is his auto sidechain rack. This gives him the ability to create ducking just like in Shaper Box or LFO tool. What is working here is this uh, auto side chain in the on the tom. The auto side chain it's a it's a Max for Life device uh, that is connected with the with the um, with the volume of a utility and and what it does is basically ducking the sound, removing even the attack. So it's uh, if you know the plugin Shaper Box, uh, it basically does the same thing, but is uh, native from Ableton and might be helpful. You can also find it in the in uh, in my pack. It's really useful also because it doesn't take so much. Uh, doesn't, doesn't include latency and uh, it doesn't take so much CPU, almost nothing. So it's helpful sometimes. It's uh, you don't even have to, you know, when you put the compressor and sidechain, you don't even have to refer to the kick. Just you put it there and it's working. Tip number four is sample manipulation. Chiotz loves working with samples. He constantly tweaks and resamples them to create original patterns. He also messes around with a lot of different warp modes to create different timbers. What we can do is to check some other loops. So let's dive in, uh, in the sample library. I would look for a bass. I'll go with this one maybe.
for me, it's flowing already. So what do we need? What I like to do, actually, is using the same sound we already used. So if, for example, here we use this, this bass that looks like this, if we just double it and do something else with it, for example, transposing it, you know, playing with it. Now, let's see what, what we can do. I click on it, for example, and I push it up. Let's see how it sounds. So before, after, even more. So transient, you know, you probably know this trick. So let's just shorten up the transient. And add some delay. Maybe you can even put it directly here. Now wait, here. And uh, I wanted to put this um, auto side chain. So here. Tip number five is working with loops in session view. Once the initial drums are done, Chots loves to create his harmonic elements by mixing and matching different loop samples in session view. Let's go into loops. Guitar, for example, let add something like in reverse that takes long, so it's good for transitions. Like this one. Ah, you have to know that everything in this pack is in A minor. So everything will work with everything. Every time this guitar reverse is finishing, we could add a drum, we could remove something. So let's keep it there. That's a good transition element. This, is, this one is good. This one. Okay. This one maybe. Tip number six is creating drones from samples. To create an awesome background drone for his track, Chot soaks his melodic sample in reverb. I like the sound, okay? But we can do something else with it. For example, we can uh, resample this and getting an atmosphere. I like to use the Valhalla. Vintage verb sounds fine. Or you can use also a reverb from Ableton, eh? But the most important thing is that mix is 100%, so the dry wet is 100%, decay is long. So I looped just a section, so there's an no melodies going on and this can be really like a nice background for for the track tip number seven is using auto filters lfo Chots processes one of his loops with the auto filter effect he turns on the lfo section to add movement and stereo interest let's put another filter like a bandpass filter uh, with a slope at 12 db so it's no 
higher. Um, you can hear more stuff out of the signal. So if we introduce some LFO, it will start moving like left and right. And then slowly going down. And if we put some phase, for example, 180 degree, it will be also phased uh, between the left and right channel. Tip number eight is stereo stutter effect. One of his most interesting custom effects is the stereo stutter rack. Here he uses it to add filtering movement to a pad during the break. Here it comes the break. And I have like a, like a tool that might be useful, this one. So actually this should be mapped to the LFO frequencies. And this one to randomness. Okay, so we can start like this. Tip number nine is resampled bass effect. Here Chots creates a crazy transition from a bass sample by resampling it and using it with the arpeggiator MIDI effect. I would take the synth, the main synth, and do something with it, so... So I would take just the last note, for example, and trying to do like a build up with it. Let's create another MIDI track. Let's sample this. I put this inside the, the MIDI track, and uh, what we have is we have the one shot of the of the bass, and we can play it. We can play it, and we can put also effects on it. We can put, for example, an arpeggiator. We I remove the sync. Gate opened. And uh, and then something like like this, I would say. Or let's just create a clip. Okay. Maybe better a drop like this. 
Tip number 10 is recording Foley percussion with the phone. Chelts loves recording random Foley sounds with his phone. He then chooses the best parts and uses them as organic background percussion effects. Okay, and I have, I think I have a secret sauce for this break. So, <laughs> this little baby here makes thousands of different sound and it's in my room and I, now and then I record it and actually you can also find a lot of these sounds inside the pack. So I would go ahead and record some sounds. Now that we recorded this amazing box of wonders, it's clipped a little bit, but it's okay. For what we have to do, it's not the main sound of the, of the song. So let's see what we have. and reverb maybe. Maybe for the break you use the last part. That's it for this video, if you enjoyed it hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and make sure to check out the sound pack just released with us which includes all the samples and Ableton devices he used in this video. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next ones.